Hey guys, welcome to ShiftCast. You're watching a segment from the full video. If you want to catch the full video, check it out in the live tab of our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. I'm going to take this take for myself. Ooh. Oh. Seiko and Alpha 54 are higher on the GOAT list than Garrett G. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be speed taken if we didn't have some GOAT talk. Don't you dare say that. <laughs> Garrett G is an icon, a legend. He is a role model. He is still a competitor, granted not at the top tier anymore. But this guy was at every world championship from season two to season, I guess what it would be, 11? 22. It would have been the 12th season. 12th season. That, oh, no, the 11th. 11th, okay. That is unfreaking believable I mean, that, now, he didn't have the highest highs as KDOP, but that rivals, like, the longevity, right? And, and I mm -hmm. think that there is something there to praise the discipline, the work ethic, um, you know, the hunger and drive to continue. And, 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 you know, Garrett is also a unique in the sense, it's a unique player in the sense that, like, um, he did not bounce from team to team. And I know that, that there's different people with different opinions on that kind of stuff. But I think it just, again, shows a level of, of work ethic and leadership and maturity. And those are things, you know, I just got done rattling off how that stuff doesn't matter anymore. But... <laughs> But I love that stuff. Um, and, and here's the reality. Al 54 has one world championship. Seiko has one world championship. And so does Garrett. Now, Seiko has uh, a major championship as well, right? Does Alpha. Alpha has any other land wins? Spring major, Boston. So, okay, so... Geez, okay, Garrett so did have, have two, the X they have, Games, They have though. two major lands as well. Um, which definitely is... Like, those are heavier weight than, than some of the things that I think Garrett has... Um, found success in yeah but but i'm i'm gonna and i i will say this of course i'm you know i'm being animated i think it's very close and if somebody were to argue the uh the other i think that's fair as well but i i think that there is you know maybe it's nostalgia maybe it's just you know there's something special about the the, the pioneers the forefathers kind of the the players that paved the way for what is excellence today i think if you look when i i i have a feeling that when garrett g retires it will be very similar to what we see with squishy where a lot of players are like, hey, I looked up to you for a long time. You inspired me to play the game or do this certain thing or whatever. So I, I and Garrett, full of transparency, my favorite player, always has been. He's just a, an absolute legend. Um, you know, I love watching players because of how impressive they are on the field, but I become a fan of players by how they're carrying themselves, creating the content, showing gratitude and appreciation for what you're doing because it is, it is special. It's something that Come I think... It's Captain America. He's Captain America. That's right. He is. There's only one. And so for me, I got to keep Garrett G a little higher on the GOAT list. But the reality is, I mean, either of them could hop him this very season. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's got a special place in my heart too, because it was their front row in Madrid when he completed his uh, redemption arc from no matter what, I won't stop. I won't quit this game until magic, I'm lifting dude. that trophy. It is. That's and movie that's... stuff. That's magic. Oh, oh my gosh. I so love good. that. So yeah, I, I'm um, sorry. I had to take that one because yeah, no, like no. I said, Garrett's my that's, favorite player. Hey, listen, if, if you're that passionate, we're not going <laughs> to keep you from it. But I'm going to throw one at Jens right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this one, you know, this is a really serious topic. So I need you to lock in. Okay. And I'm it's that in. making like a full meal at like three in the morning is or, like a real random time is just like the best shit ever like it just hits <laughs> so super different i totally disagree oh i, I knew you totally would. disagree you seem like you love yeah, your, your routine you seem I knew you, you love would. your routine <laughs> no i i mean i had dinner at like 10 uh, half past 10 tonight so hmm. uh, it's not even that weird for me to be like super late or anything but if you're really going to go all out cooking i mean i i do like cooking in general i do like making something from scratch um really getting everything together getting my large cutting board out and everything but if you're doing that such a weird time you're just screwing up basically the next two to three business days it's just <laughs> there is no other way around it the, it's it's making yourself jet lagged and not even getting on the plane. Uh, that was the most boomer thing I've ever heard. Two to three business he days. Said, that is said, crazy. Get your ass to bed. Let me let me ask you this: What if you are not sober? 
if you're not oh that's so that's different. different right that's, that's di so if you're not different. sober <laughs> i i mean you don't know this about me but i literally have a reputation for cooking dinner when i'm not sober like the first <laughs> thing i did when we went on like a, a student bar hopping session yeah. we got back actually we were staying over at um front of my friend's rooms in the city center and i live just two streets away um but it was a little bit out of our route to where we were staying over but it was like two or three a.m and two of us were a little little hungry a little peckish and i was like <laughs> What the hell? I'm going to make pasta. So I, on my own, went to my own room, went to make a full pan of pasta. And I put everything together and brought the whole pan oh, yeah. to the other student room. So, I mean, we had, it, was, it was actually I great was, food. I bet it was magnificent. Smacking. It was actually good. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have such a, um, in a similar event, I have such a vivid memory of when I was in uh, college where my roommates was like he was huge cook like he loved cooking food all that stuff so his uh, his aunt got him like a little vial of truffle oil for his Ooh. birthday yeah. and i remember just like coming home from the bars one night and he was like oh, i'm bringing it out and he made yeah. like a giant <laughs> bowl of of pasta and put the truffle oil in it and like i swear top four like the most euphoric <laughs> feelings of my life. <laughs> that, that, I understood why it's a gajillion dollars to buy that. I mean, I it hits it different yeah. if, if you're looking at it that way, but oftentimes it's more of a necessity when, when it's not after yeah. a night out, it's like, yeah. oh, I'm just hungry, but I'm also tired and I need to do some of one of the two sleep or eat. Mm -hmm. Um, or I'm just suffering for no reason. And then when you choose to actually eat and cook a full meal because you don't have anything left in the freezer, it's just, ah, uh, no, <laughs> not a good time. All right. Um, okay, <clears throat> let me throw one over to Michael. We talked a little bit about this goat stuff, so let me throw this to you. Zen is already the goat from a skill perspective. Before you go... Oh. Outline what 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 is skill perspective? What does that actually mean? Yeah, so I think there's two ways you can look at this. You can look at is he the most is he the best player at Rocket League that there's ever been in the history of the game? I like, think in like this at case, that yes. time yes. relative to no, like in general. And I think well, in yes, general, the I best think he, player, yeah. yeah, the best player at the time is the best player. I think this is more of a question of is he is the gap between him and the second most yeah, skilled player yeah. gotcha. larger than it's ever been? Mm -hmm. To which I would say no. I think there's two other times in which the gap between the, the most skilled player and the second most skilled player was a teeny tiny bit larger. And that was when Justin first came into the RLCS. And I think when, in terms of pure skill, not game sense, just like mechanical ability. Yeah. And then I think the second time was RLCS X Monkey Moon. Um, I think that Monkey Moon's fundamental skill and understanding of how to get the ball where he wanted it to go using his car was fought, was so much further ahead. That's why he dominated. And I think Justin, the more advanced mechanics, um, I mean, they completely dumbfounded the rest of the league. And a lot of, basically the entire league had to change because of what, of, what Justin was doing, right? They, they energy had set their team up in order to maximize his talent. Um, and they immediately became a world championship finalist, right? Um, so I think Zen is within those three. I think you could also talk about, I was thinking about maybe Cronovi like really early on, but I think yeah. Cux was right there with them. Um, uh, I think that they were, you know, kind of the, the figureheads. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think Cux, you could argue was more skilled because he was so unorthodox in the way he played that he maybe thought of the game on a more skilled level. And well, Cronovi was more of a, like a master of the fundamentals from start PC. Um, but yeah, so I think I would still take Monkey Moon. I think winning 10 events out of 12, was it? Or nine events out of 12 in Europe is just a proof that you are, you understood the game on a level that they, that the rest of the world had, had not yet figured out. Um, and then I think Zen would be right there with Justin where their ability, what they were trying to do, no one else was trying to do. So mm -hmm. the rest of the, there was almost a buffer period where the rest of the world had to figure out why they were doing what they were doing and then replicate it. And do you agree with that? Uh, um, I mean, uh, I agree with Kronovi not being at the top of his time. So, um, <laughs> it, so you, I got him one. I got something. And I'll take no, it. no, no. I, I think, I think generally, yeah. I, I much. like it all, but I would shuffle the players, and oh, my yeah. toss would be Zen. Yeah. Zen, it would be Zen and Monkey Moon Justin. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think I'd probably throw Justin above Monkey Moon as well. So I think Monkey Moon is a lot here. I mean, you can't here. go wrong with him. Monkey Moon is a lot here. When yeah, I think skill, fair. I just think mechanics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We were, we're talking about skill. I mean, it, what do you count as skill? But right. we, I think it's generally assumed in this conversation, it's more from a mechanical point of view. Mm -hmm. And then, and then yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much what it comes down to. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm there with like all of your, the people. And it yeah. is, you know, it is a debate. So, and um, it's totally subjective. Hoodie, let me yeah. throw one to you. Come on. Because no, you're a former just... coach. Yeah. You like the coaching. Um, the top five coaches of all time are Sethu, Farah, Eversax, Chrome, and Gregan. Um, yeah, I think so. No I think Jazzo they're the most accomplished coaches. I think they are the most... Um, Legend. I mean, outside of that, I think... I mean, Snasky's been coaching for a while. Verge has been coaching for a very long time. I think Verge was co kind of... You know, I was talking about earlier, like those pioneers have a special place. I think Verge is one yeah. of those for the coaching. Jazzo as well. Because Jazzo like invented Jazzo, scrims, yes. right? Yep, that's right. Um, and so, you know, y'all know early on, coaching wasn't really a thing. Teams would have a manager or like a handler, <laughs> but not a coach, right? And so, yeah, I think some of those, some of those first people that kind of blended the role and started to do some advising and, and replay reviews and stuff like that, I think were very instrumental in you know, pushing things to where they are now. But yeah, I mean, Farah, obviously one of the most accomplished in a very, I mean, a, a very short amount of time relative to some of his peers. Um, I think Sathew and Eversax are, are in that and, and Gregan and Chrome maybe have not had as much success as the other three, but I think they um, are like very outspoken. I think they are very present like on socials or, or they're willing to do interviews and they're outspoken. And so you get a little bit more of an idea about like what their role was there. Of course, we won't know everything, but um, it's easier to kind of rate them highly when their team is finding success and they're also like available and will speak to the public. So I think that's a great list for top five coaches of all time. Can I, I, remember can I suggest writing... one? Can I suggest one? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think I would take, I don't want to take any of them out. I think if I had to take one out, it would be Chrome, but I'll love to Chrome. I, I would put Sad Jr. in there. Season six Sad, world okay. champion. So seven top four that I think um, that's a great shout. And I think that is just like evidence to what I was saying before, where yeah. like sad junior is not as present publicly. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I think sad to me um, has, has proven both that he can take a young player or a young team and bring them up as he did with yeah. LJ. Uh, he can elevate a team that is underperforming, which is space station. And if you give him top end talent, he will win you the world championship with like he did with C9. So I would say I would put him in there. But I wouldn't throw Chrome out. I would throw Farah out because it's been such a short amount of time to call him one of the top five coaches of all time. I mean, it's been super impressive, but he's also just had really good teams. Yeah, to be fair, he's won more than Chrome did in the open era, and Chrome was in the Fair number one. Three, yeah. I, I remember yeah. writing an article about Chrome from the perspective as of best coach of the year back in, I want to say, early 2020. Yeah, this is that's the one he was shift. designing. This is a the, GG recon. Yeah, I think I think he might. Chrome to me is maybe the best play designer or system designer um, in terms of how he was able to draw up stuff for his team to do. Um, but I think there's a lot of other stuff that goes into coaching, and it seems like uh, some of the other coaches may have had some of those auxiliary things better than him, uh, just because it felt like by the end. And listen, it was probably just because he'd been the coach there forever. But you could uh, tell that, like, once they switched away from Chrome, it felt like there was a different sort of moxie to that team. And uh, you know, when you're talking goats, the margins can be that thin. So it's so hard to say because it's yeah, so unclear what they're, yeah. what they're actually doing. Like yeah. sometimes you hear player talk, players talk about them, but very often that's because they're good friends with them or they've just had a good time on yeah. that team, not because he was actually the best coach ever. You know, right? Mm. It's very hard to say. Um, okay, let's throw another one to you. Uh, you. You have talked a little bit about this, Michael. I want to hear what you have to say. Exchanging Ahmad for Venom is a lateral move for Rule 1, meaning they will make the major, but they won't challenge Fal Falcons domestically. Well, you know, I am on the shift cast, so it's time to do some fence sitting. Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, in the fact that they will make the major, it will technically be a lateral move. They'll make the major, they won't go that very, that very far, and they will not be as good as Falcons. But um i think that because twisted minds got better and there are better teams in the 
um, in the ecosystem, they would have had to get better anyway. Um, so I think they're going to get better. It just won't be at the level that they're going to do anything different internationally. So it's like, yeah, I think I said, I think that there's a little bit of like Mina V1 going on there with the team composition, and that, that does work regionally if Nupo can pop off, which he's proven time and time again he can. Um, and then I think they're going to get to land, and their teams are just going to start insta-challenging him, and they're going to go about 1-3 or 2-3 again. So nothing fun, but yeah, I guess yes and no. But uh, yes, you have the last one. And so uh, we're going to swing it over to your favorite region, North America, for the last mm-hmm. question. Uh, LG will make another grand final. They made one in the second open qualifier in the first split. They'll make another grand final in this second split. LG? Lumino- Luminosity yeah. or Luna Galaxy? <laughs> no, the North American one. North America, <laughs> yeah. Um, another grand final. Yes, sure. I mean, it can happen. It's it's a team that's... No, no. Proven. No, no. Not can they. Yeah, oh, will, will they? they? Yeah, mm-hmm. yes or no. I did the fence sitting, so you can't. We only get to do oh, it once a God. show. Um, I mean, statistically, it is unlikely, but I'll go against the numbers and say they will. Okay. Nice. Um, they've proven to get the points. And mm. how do you get the points? Getting up there in those playoff brackets. Uh, Luminosity is a team that has a lot of the confidence, a lot of the comfort, it feels like. It feels like they're comfortable as a team. Yeah, yeah. Um, within yeah. all those other teams that are challenging for the exact same spot in the in the brackets, because uh, it's, it's like a top seven or something, right? Um, where Luminosity is just one of the teams and they don't particularly stand out uh, among those but they seem to be comfortable enough that uh, if they get a little bit lucky with the bracket if they get a little bit you know comfortable in their games getting the wins to go their way then uh, yeah they'll make another grand final mm, okay nice well that's we gonna our, conclude we got, our, we got our reddles thumbnail for this we got our reddles thumbnail there, there we go, go. Yeah. lots of more angry comments Not top two <laughs> oh goodness thank you all for watching Shiftcast. if you want to catch some more episodes you can do so right here on this youtube channel or on spotify we'll catch you next time